we this is actually a three-part class it was identifying spiritual gifts was the first part and then um uh, developing spiritual gifts and now utilizing spiritual gifts. And this was a part of our Do You Know What Your Spiritual Gifts Are uh, classes. And so this is the last one. Amen. And so what we're going to be talking about today is how we can use the gifts and callings that God has given us to minister, amen, in spite of COVID. And I think that's very, very important because we have a mandate and that mandate is to carry out the Great Commission. Even in this time of shutdowns and quarantines and social distancing, praise God, and uh, yeah, and the fear of contracting COVID. What is it that God would have us do in this season and how do we get the job done? Praise God. So basically, that's what we're going to talk about. God has given us spiritual gifts. Amen. He has given us everything that we need to be able to move forward. So it is extremely important that we carry out what we were called to do. Amen. Amen. The gifts that God has given us, the callings, even before the foundation of the world, you were called, you were anointed. Praise God. And you have everything that you need. Many times we think we lack things. We think we don't have enough experience. We think that we don't have enough understanding. We don't really understand how things are supposed to be done. But every born again believer has at least one spiritual gift. And we know that uh, in biblical times, people followed Jesus Christ. They followed his ministry. And guess what? They didn't follow him just to hear the word. And in fact, that wasn't the reason why they followed. They followed because of the miracles. Amen. Imagine, if you will, what would happen if uh, people knew Praise God, the gift of God that's upon your life, the calling of God that's upon your life. And they knew that they could be delivered, they could be blessed, they could be set free, they could be healed. Praise God, you would not be able to stop them from getting to you. Amen. And then this also lets them know that God is still God. He still sits on the throne. He's still the healer. He's still the mind regulator. Amen. He's still the savior. He's still the provider. He's still the way maker. And a lot of people don't know that. Uh, and, and so we need to figure out what we can do so that the world will know that God is still God. Amen. Praise God. And so those are the kinds of things that we're going to be talking about today. So I want to start with uh, um, how God communicates to our spirit. Amen. How God communicates to us. Okay. Now, we know from our last class that there are over 50 spiritual gifts. I believe... Um, I don't know who wasn't here for that class. I think uh, we only have one person who was not here for that class. And if you're interested in getting a list of those spiritual gifts, I would be happy to send them to you if you text me your um, email address. I'm going to send them to you. Praise God. Uh, but really, Real quickly, I'm going to put this up on my screen, and you can see some of these spiritual gifts that are on this list. Not going to read them, um, only because it will take up too much of our time today, and we've already gone through them. But you can see here that there are 56 spiritual gifts in the Word of God. So the spiritual gifts go beyond um, the gifts of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter number 12. Amen. But there are many, many, many other spiritual gifts in God's word. Praise the name of the Lord. And you have at least one of them. Amen. And so as the believer uh, in Christ Jesus, we have to know 
God's voice. That's number one. You got to know God's voice. You got to know that the voice that you are hearing, where is it coming from? Where is the source? Because there are three sources. Either it's coming from God, amen, or it's coming from your own thoughts, or it's coming from the enemy. Praise the Lord. And a lot of times we hear people say, well, I don't know the voice of God. How do I know when it's God that's speaking? We're going to talk about that in a, in a minute. But we have to know his voice. Then we have to be able to comprehend what the Holy Spirit is telling us. We hear the word of God when ministering to people. God will speak to you. He will show you a, a particular thing. He will allow you to see or know a particular thing. But are you able to comprehend? what God is saying. Because sometimes what God is saying and what we comprehend him to be saying can be two different things. And so we need to make sure that what we hear, amen, and what we, what, what, what we think and what God is actually saying is the same thing. And the way we do that, first of all, it takes practice. Amen. And we're going to talk a lot about that. You have to practice your gift. It will not grow. It will not uh, be, become effective until you practice the gift. People are afraid of practicing the gift. What if I say the wrong thing? What if it's wrong? What if I do the wrong thing? Praise God. Hallelujah. You have got to practice that gift. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. You've got to familiarize yourself. Amen. With how God moves what God does. Part of, uh, one thing that will help you with that is knowing his character, knowing how he moves, knowing what he did in the word of God. There are certain things that happen that you already know that wasn't God, you know, because it doesn't line up with his character and it doesn't line up with his word. Then we have to acknowledge that it's God. And that's where your faith really kicks in. Amen. You know, your gifts will never grow beyond your faith. Everything with God is faith. You were saved by faith. Amen. Through grace, uh, through Jesus Christ. But you have to have faith. Without faith, it's impossible to believe God. You got to realize that God created you. God gifted you. God wants to use you. God put you here in this earth for a particular purpose. And so you have to acknowledge this is God in my life, moving me in this direction, showing me this particular thing, telling me to do this particular thing. And then after you do that, then you have to step out and do it. And a lot of times that's where we fail. We are okay with hearing the voice, okay with comprehension, okay with acknowledgement, but then when the Holy Spirit gives us that unction, now it's time to step out. That's where we fail, amen. And if you don't do it, God is not gonna continue to take you higher when you are afraid to take those baby steps to get you to a place where he can really do what he wants to do in your life. Amen. The confirmation will come in your spirit, man. We're going to talk about that too. The confirmation will come in your spirit, man. When I went to Africa and there was a man there who could not walk and he did, he, uh, I'm not going to talk a lot about him, but uh, uh, we prayed for him. I prayed for him uh, that he would walk, praise God. And do you know that he came in crawling like this, praise God, but went out walking, praise the name of the Lord. And, and simply by having enough boldness to pray. Sometimes we don't have boldness to pray because we're afraid, well, what if God doesn't do it? Well, what if this doesn't happen? And there will be those times that it won't, but there will be times that it will. 
Praise God. And so we have to stand on God's word. Understand something that I say all the time. God gave us a body, a soul, and a spirit. A body, a soul, and a spirit. Now, we did an analogy last time. And in the we had the body, the soul was in the middle, and the spirit was in the, on the end. And what I told you is that depending on your spiritual walk, where you are, amen, when you hear a word, it is either received through the spirit man or it is received through the natural man. Amen. Praise God. And I think I had a slide from last time. I'm going to try to pull it up uh, real quickly if I have it here, and it looks like I don't have it here, amen. So anyway, so if you are a person of faith and you are being led by the spirit of God, when you receive that message, it's coming to that spirit man, amen. And the spirit man gets it and the spirit man interprets it to the soulish man, the body. The soulish man is the one we have the problem with because then when he gets it, he begins to analyze it and try to figure it out and see if it's, if it's so, see if it makes sense. Praise God. And how many of you know, a lot of the things that God tells us to do, doesn't, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Amen. And it is spiritually discerned. Praise God. So that the natural man who is on the end doesn't understand it. And so once it goes to the soulish man, that soulish man does one or two things. He either now relates it to the natural man, amen, and the natural man is, decides that he's going to fulfill what was said or he throws it back to the soulish man. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Now, if you are a person who, are, who is led by the spirit, when it comes to the spirit man and the soulish man gets it and he began to analyze it and it don't make sense. And why are you going to do that? And what if it's not God? And what if they talk about you? And what if they treat you funny? And what if, what if, what if, what if? Praise God. Then the spirit man will say, I believe God. Amen. And we are going to do what God says do. Amen. And it's still up to the natural man to carry it out. But if the spirit man is not strong enough, then when the soulish man gives you all of these reasons not to move forward, then you are not going to do what God told you to do. On the other hand, if you are a person of the world, if you are a person, a man who is not led by the spirit, then you're gonna, that message is gonna come to the natural man first. And it goes to the soulish man who does the same thing, analyze it, try to, try to stop you, put obstacles in your block, but it never gets over to the spirit man because your spirit man is too weak to receive it. Remember the Bible says that the spirit, the, the natural man cannot receive the things of the spirit because they are foolishness to him. Amen. And so the, 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 the soulish man says, oh, that's just foolishness. Amen. And so he, he gives it back to that, to, to the body, to um, the body, and then the body decides we're not doing that. Amen. And so that's what happens that keeps us from being able to move forward. Now, I did some um, screens here for you. Uh, and let me see. For some reason, I pulled one up a moment ago. Now I want to act funny. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Let me see if I can get it up for you. Amen. Because I think it will probably help you. So let's go to the very top here. Praise God in Jesus' name. Okay. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Now, we already did the welcome. I think I did the welcome. 
and I already told you what the session is about and what we're going to be talking about. And so we're now talking about knowing the voice of God and how God communicates to the spirit man and not to your physical man. He will never communicate to the physical man. He's only going to communicate to the spirit. Amen. And that's why he gave you a spirit. Spirit communicates with spirit. We have body, soul, um, and spirit. And the spirit communicates with the spirit. Now, here's the thing. It can communicate with the spirit of God. It can also communicate with demonic spirits. The choice is yours. A man, the soulish man, represents your thoughts, your, your intellect, your feelings, your emotions, your desires. All of those things is, uh, come from the soulish man, the one that's in the middle, the one that analyzes everything that God puts in your heart, puts in your mind. Amen. And then we have a body, and the body inhabits the earth. It's what we need to be here on earth. The Bible tells us that flesh and blood cannot inhabit the kingdom of God. So we know that our flesh is not going into heaven like this, praise the Lord. It's going to be changed in a moment of a twinkling of an eye. We also know that when God speaks, he's going to speak to you from a spiritual perspective. And so he's going to speak to the spirit man. If your spirit man is able to receive it, then, amen, you will be able to hear what God is saying in the spirit realm. Now, when we look at 1 Corinthians 2 and 4, and I do want to read that um, scripture real quick here, 1 Corinthians 2 and 4, and I've already uh, paraphrased the scripture for you, but I always like to go to the word of God. So in 1 Corinthians 2 and 4, the word of God says, uh, 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 uh. It says, for my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but demonstration of the spirit and power. Amen. And so there, there needs to be a demonstration of the power of God in everything that we do. Hallelujah, because people don't need to hear from me. They don't need to hear from you. They need to hear from the Holy Spirit. They need to hear from God. You are simply his mouthpiece and he uses you, amen, in the earth so that they can have an understanding of what God is saying, amen. James 2 and 26 says, uh, without the spirit, the body is dead. And likewise, without God's spirit, it's in him we live, we move, we have our being. If we don't have God's spirit, praise God, guess what? Amen. Everything that we do is going to be dead. There will be no life to it. Amen. Now, so how do we know the voice of the Lord? How do we know God's voice? Praise God. How do we know God's voice? We know God's voice through relationship. And I'm gonna, um, I've, I've said this before, but I think it's important for us to go through this really quickly this time. And uh, some of us, I don't know that all of us, but some of us are mothers. Praise the name of the Lord. You have children and you know your children. Praise God. I remember when my uh, son was young, Amen. It could be a uh, hundred kids in a room and all of them could be crying, but my ear was tuned to his cry. Praise God. I could hear his cry. Amen. When your child or your mother or your husband or a friend or a loved one or a coworker, somebody that you have a relationship with calls you on the phone, you don't have to say, who is this? Because you already know, you know by the tone of their voice, you know because you have relationship with them. When your loved one is sick, something is wrong with them, 
and they call you before they even say anything about what the problem is, what do you say, what's wrong? When they come in your presence, you can look at them, what's wrong? You know immediately that there is a problem. How do you know? You know because you've spent time with that person. You have a relationship with that person. You understand how they communicate. They have a certain look about them when something is wrong. Amen. You are, un, you are able uh, uh, to discern their moods. You know when they're happy, excited. You know when they're having pain. You know when they're sad. You know when they're hungry, when they're angry. You just know those things. Praise God. Hallelujah. You have this intuitive perception. And so you know it. Well, guess what? The same thing happens with the Lord. When you spend time in the presence of the Lord, amen, you are able to discern something, some things about him. You can discern his presence. Amen. When you spend time in prayer, and, and maybe when you first start, you know, you may not even feel the presence of God immediately. But as you continue, suddenly you feel his presence. Why? Because he said, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you from now until the end of the age. And so we understand that he has an abiding presence that never leaves us, but he also has have a manifested presence. And so what does that mean? That means that he is manifesting himself so that when he comes in, now you feel the move of God. We see this in church a lot of times, amen. Somebody may be preaching or singing or praying or giving a testimony and suddenly, amen, the whole atmosphere is filled with God's manifested presence and you feel him, amen. And we recognize that when he comes in like that, he comes for a purpose. And I've told you this before. He comes for a purpose. And the purpose, sometimes is to, he wants to be praised. Sometimes he wants to uh, uh, do a creative miracle. Sometimes he wants to heal somebody. Sometimes he wants the word of wisdom to go forth or the word of prophecy or the word of knowledge. Sometimes he wants to reveal a thing. He wants to heal somebody. He always comes for a purpose, but somebody has to be in tune enough to say, this is the power of God here, amen, and in tune enough to know what he desires to do in that meeting, amen, during that time. Glory to God. And so a lot of times we miss the purpose of God when he comes, when he manifests his presence, because we think that he's only there because he wants to be praised. Well, what if he wants to do something else? And so what we need to do is pray and say, God, have your way. And somebody has to be bold enough, amen, uh, uh, and spiritual enough to be able to discern in the spirit what he's there for. Maybe he's there because he wants to lift somebody's burden. But unless you speak it, Hallelujah. The power in speaking it and calling those things that be not as though they were, just simply speaking it, hallelujah, changes the whole atmosphere and people are able to receive, they're able to pull down from heaven what God is trying to do in that season. Just like that mother knows that child, God wants us to know him like that. He wants us to have the relationship with him like that. Amen. He wants us to know his voice. He wants us to be able to decipher what he's saying, what he's doing. Amen. Amen. Now, it's also important to understand that he's versatile and how he speaks. And I think last time I gave you a list of, oh God, I don't remember how many uh, ways that the Holy Spirit speaks to us. And a lot of times we totally miss it. We totally miss it because he doesn't always come with thunder. 
He doesn't always come speaking in tongues. Praise God. He doesn't always come in the way that you expect him to come. Amen. Sometimes he'll come in a way that you did not expect, but it's still God. And uh, the only way that we will know, praise the Lord, is when we have that kind of relationship with him. Amen. Okay, we got to mute a phone because we're getting a lot of feedback. Amen. Sister Ward, please mute your phone. God bless. Amen. And so that is the only way, praise God, um, that we will know what God wants to do in our lives. So what we need to do is understand that he uh, he communicates in many different ways, and he wants to communicate with you. He wants you to hear him. He wants you to understand him. We said last month that a lot of times God is speaking to us, and we're just ignoring him. We don't acknowledge him. You know, we talked about how um, uh, who Samuel, when he was young, and he didn't know the voice of the Lord, and when the Lord spoke to him, he ran to Eli. At least he got up and did something. Some of us just sit there and keep doing whatever it is we're doing, and we don't even acknowledge. You got to stop and acknowledge, Lord, your servant hears you. Speak, Lord. Amen. And then be quiet and allow him to speak to you and to say to you what he wants to say. Amen. We have to take the time to meditate on the Lord, meditate on the word of God and allow him to speak to us. Now, a lot of times uh, that means that we got to have some time out of our schedule that, that we just devote to hearing from God. In um, Joshua chapter number one, verse number eight, it says, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night. Now, some of us have so much on our hearts, so much in our minds, how often do you actually meditate on the word of God? We'll talk about that later. That you may observe and do according to all that is written therein, for then shall your way be made prosperous. And so we have to take that time to meditate on the Lord. Now, here are some of the things that causes us to be ineffective in the calling and in the gift that God has given us. Number one, lacking love and compassion for others. Lacking love and compassion for others. Uh, the Lord said that with love and kindness have I drawn thee. It's going to take love. You know, you're going to meet all kinds of people. They'll be mixed up in all kinds of stuff, just like we were. Amen. A lot of times we forget we were there too. We got to have compassion. Even when it to you, it makes no sense. Be compassionate nevertheless. Be concerned. Listen to what people have to say. And now is such a good time for that because people are hurting. They are afraid. They don't know where to turn. They don't know who can help. And you have the answer. Amen. And so if we take the time to just talk to them and show the love of God. Amen. Glory to God. And then the second thing is not to be self-willed. Not to be, we, we've got to not be led by our spirit, but led by God's spirit. Don't think that you already know. Don't think that you already understand. You know, one of the, the terrible things um, that we can do sometimes when ministering to people, when they're pouring out their complaint, their heartache, uh, whatever it is they're going through that, you know, and sometimes we'll say, I know how you feel. Well, you know what? You really don't know how they feel. You may have had a similar situation, but to say, I know how you feel. And then sometimes the people of God can say some crazy things. 
I remember when my husband died, amen, and people were trying to console me. And one lady said to me, well, look at the bright side. The bright side is you don't have to wash his clothes. You don't have to cook his meals. You don't have to take care of him while he's sick. And I recognized that she was trying to console me. But you know what? She was not consoling me. Praise God. To me, that was not the bright side. I didn't mind doing those kinds of things. And so sometimes when we don't know what to say, the best thing to do is pray and just be present. Amen. Wait for the, the, the person to talk to you. Praise the Lord. People always say, well, I don't know what to say. Amen. And when you don't, don't say anything. Amen. The other thing that causes us to be ineffective is using intimidation methods. And I think we've all been to places where people intentionally try to intimidate us or they try to embarrass us. Amen. Uh, they try to uh, air out your dirty laundry. Praise God. If God gives you a word from somebody, you got to know how to deliver that word. Some words is not to be put out there publicly for everybody to hear. Some things is just for the person that God gave the word. See, God doesn't want you to embarrass them or hurt them or put them down. And yes, even when they are wrong, God doesn't want you to destroy them. The whole object is for them to get saved. The whole object for them to understand God. You know, you will remember in the Bible when the when Jesus met the woman at the well, he didn't go all into her business. And when he talked to her, he talked to her. He didn't have an audience and say, that's right. The man she with now, she didn't have five. And the man she with now, that's not her husband. He didn't do that. He talked to her. Amen. And so that's what God wants us to do. Conviction can come when it's done the right way. Anger comes when it's done the wrong way. Amen. And so sometimes we just make people mad. Why? Because we didn't do it right. Amen. And so then we call them the devil. Praise the name of the Lord. When the thought is your approach your approach, the expression on your face, amen. Your attitude when you said it, amen. Your body language when you said it. All of these things can cause us to be ineffective in ministry. You got to understand that people who are unsaved and whatever it is that they are mixed up, tied up, tangled up in, amen, they are, it's because uh, um, the devil has them bound. Amen. They are bound by a demonic spirit that they do not have authority over. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. And so you have to be able, amen, to recognize that. And you got to be able to get them delivered. Amen. And so we don't want to use intimidation methods. Uh, uh, and a lot of times, you know, we just talked a little bit about it, having just poor skills, not knowing. Uh, what to do and how to do it, have a good heart of wanting to do it, but then not knowing how to do it. And, and, some, and then you meet those that are uh, poor social skills. We socially are poor in dealing with people. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, we are unstable in our faith. We, we're, we're not even really sure if God's going to do it. Amen. Um, um, and we're not where we should be uh, in the Lord in terms of our faith. And so when we try to encourage somebody else, you can't encourage them higher than where you are. You know, I hear people saying, well, I have faith for other people. Amen. Praise God. You got to have faith for you. <laughs> you got to have faith that God loves you. God wants to use you. God called you. Amen. And he's going to do exactly what he promised. Then we have the glory seekers. Y'all know about that. People who just want all the glory and all the honor to be upon them. They don't want to glorify God. They don't really care about the people. Amen. They just looking for glory. And the ones that lack character, live in any kind of way. 
Praise the Lord. Any kind of way. Everybody know it, but always got a word from the Lord. And people don't want to hear from people like that. Amen. Ministering with the wrong motives. What is your motive? See, we can do a good thing. Praise God. But our motive could be wrong. And that's why in the book of Corinthians, the Bible says that uh, our works are going to be tested. And it's going to be tested by fire. Praise God. Hallelujah. And if it sustains the fire, it means you had the right motives. You, you see, because you can minister to somebody and you can tell them a good thing and it's a good thing. But if you did it to hurt them, if you did it to embarrass them, if you did it to make yourself look good, if you did it for all of any other reason other than to get them closer to the Lord, then uh, uh, you wasted your time. And then last is mean spirited. You know, there are so many people who are so mean spirited. And especially when we talk about people who are gifted in the Lord, they're just so mean. You can barely say anything to them. You're afraid to get in the prayer line, praise God, because you don't know what they're going to say. You don't know what, how they're going to act. And so you're afraid to get in the prayer line. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. And so how do we grow stronger? How do we grow stronger in the Lord? How do we elevate our gift? How, what do we do? Well, amen. Glory to God. One of the things that we have to do is quiet our mind and our spirit. And what does that mean? It means to not, to not have so much on our mind. Sometimes we are constantly thinking, constantly worrying. Uh, uh, we're, we're, uh, our mind is not at peace. Our spirit is not at peace. We have not mastered the state of resting in the Lord. We have not, uh, um, you know, Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Praise God. But some of us have so much trouble in our hearts. Praise the name of the Lord. We are dealing and bombarded with anxiety and fear and depression. Amen. We, we're dealing with uh, economic pressures and work and family. And we're just overloaded mentally and emotionally and physically. And when you're overloaded like that, amen, it's hard for you to be able to hear from God. You have got to get to the point where you quiet your spirit, that you shut out the noise so that you can hear what God is saying. You know, a lot of times, uh, we have all of the what ifs. Well, what if this happened? What if that happened? What if this goes wrong? What does that go wrong? But first Peter five and seven says that we should cast all of our cares on the Lord for he cares for us. And when we are unable to do that, it means that we need to pray and ask God to give us more faith. Have you ever been in a situation and in your mind, all you thinking about is the what ifs, what if this, what if that, and they haven't even happened yet. Amen. But the enemy has loaded your mind and you're unable to quiet your mind. Well, why does he do that? He does that because he recognized that if he can cause you to thinking about all of your problems, all of your struggles, you can think about the COVID-19, think about your finances, thinking about your children, you know, thinking about all of these things that we are facing now, then guess what? You are not going to have your mind on Jesus. It's just not possible. You are overloaded emotionally, spiritually, and mentally with all of these other things. And so God wants us to cast our cares on him. Know that he's going to care for us. Now, look, you know why we do that? Because we've trained ourselves to do it. Worry is something that you train yourself to do. You don't do it on purpose. Amen. But when you do it all the time, you become a professional warrior. You know, anything that you practice over and over and over again, you become professional at it. 
Amen. And so there are many of us who are professional warriors. Amen. It's a learned behavior. Praise God. And so you can learn to quiet your mind by forcing yourself to do it. When you find that your mind is way out in left field, bring it back in. Praise God. You got to cast down those imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And then you know what? Bring into captivity. That's what the word says. Bring those thoughts into captivity. Now, he wouldn't tell you to do that if it wasn't possible for you to do that. But 2 Corinthians chapter number 10, praise God, verses 3 through 6 says, look, you can bring those thoughts into captivity. Now, it's not going to be easy. It won't work the first time you do it. It may not work the 10th time you do it. But as you continue to do this, now remember, we're talking about learning, praise God. Uh, to control your thought process, your behavior, just like you taught yourself to worry. Praise God. Now you're going to train yourself to bring those thoughts into the obedience of Jesus Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Now, the other thing that keeps us from growing is preoccupation and distraction. How many of us have so much on us? We're just preoccupied, amen, uh, and distracted. And that is so uh, destructive to hearing from the Holy Spirit. Because if you're already busy with all of those things that's keeping you bound, how are you going to connect to Jesus Christ in the spirit realm? You're not going to be able to. You can't connect to him in the spirit realm. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. And this is one of the reasons why God has to communicate to some of us in dreams. Because when we are awake, amen, we can't tear ourselves away from all of the mess that's going around us, all of the stuff that's in our mind. And so God got a way for you to go to sleep so he can give you a dream praise the Lord, and be able to speak to you. Amen. He's got to wait for you not to be preoccupied or distracted. Hallelujah. So that you are settled. And, you know, preoccupation and distraction is a satanic tool. Amen. Because the devil knows that if he can keep you worrying about something, keep you working on something, then he can keep you too busy, too distracted, entertaining, misdirected priorities. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And he knows that if he can do that, he can keep you spiritually immature because now you're not listening to the Lord. You're not learning the voice of God. Amen. You're not stepping out in faith and doing what God has told you to do. You are not prioritizing, hallelujah, what God wants you to do. And you are not growing spiritually because you're preoccupied. Amen. You remember the story of Mary and Martha. Amen. When Mary was upset with Martha because uh, uh, Martha was doing all the work and Mary was sitting at the feet of Jesus and she complained and it's found in Luke 10, 38 through 42. And she complained, praise God. And Jesus says she chose the better part. Well, we have got to do that. And when we cast the care on the Lord, then we don't have to continue to worry about it. Amen, amen. We have got to put Christ first in our lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. We got to know that he will deliver us. We've got to detach ourselves from negative thinking and meditate on the Lord. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Negative thoughts are always going to come to your mind. Amen. But you have the authority over them to intentionally cast them down. Amen. You can cut them off. You can pray. You can make up in your mind that you're not going to allow it to control your life. Amen. And, and, and we've got to learn to overcome the fear, especially when it comes to fear of being able to walk in victory, 
fear of doing what God has called us to be. Fear, praise God, what if it doesn't work? Fear, what if they don't like me? Fear, what if nobody wants to hang around me? All of those little fears that come that get in the way, amen, and keep you from moving forward. Or how about unbelief? When God tells you to do something, was that God? I'm not sure if that's God. I don't know if I should do that or not. And I think all of us have been in a situation where the Lord told you to do a thing, you didn't do it, and then somebody else got up and did it. Amen. And that's God saying, that was me. Amen. And so what we are to do from that is to learn, hallelujah, how God speaks to you on an individual basis, because he doesn't speak to everybody in the same way. But as you build up that communication and that relationship, you will know how God speaks to you individually. Amen. And then we got to get rid of this critical thinking. It might work in the business field. Praise God in the bit where you're analyzing things and coming up to conclusions. But you know what? That's man's wisdom, man's way of thinking. Amen. We know that the wisdom of God is foolishness to men. Amen. And so we want God's wisdom. We don't want man's wisdom. And we have to know that when God says a thing, he's able to perform it. It doesn't have to make sense. It doesn't have to look right. Praise God. All we have to do is trust him, believe him, stand on the word, stand on the promises of God. Amen. Here's what happens. We perceive uh, our lives either, either from a spiritual or a divine perception or from an earthly, natural, worldly perception. It's one or the other. So when the Lord is speaking to you about a particular thing, how are you receiving it? Through the natural man or through the spiritual man? You're, you're perceiving it one or the other. And some of us have a mixture of both where we receive it spiritually, but we can't get our natural man, amen, to get in line with what the Spirit of God is saying. Praise God. You know why? Because our soulish man has the authority in our life to talk us out of what God is saying. Amen. And so you have to intentionally choose to obey God. I don't, you sometimes you may say, I don't know how this is going to turn out. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm just going to obey God. I'm just going to stand on his word. The moment you start trying to figure out God, you can forget it. It's lost. You will never be able to figure out God. His ways is higher than our ways. His thoughts is higher than our thoughts. Amen. And so what we are to do is just walk in obedience. Leave the rest to God. Amen. Glory to God. And then we've got to grow uh, so that we are strong uh, in adversity. Glory to God strong in adversity when we're going through hallelujah that is not an indication to stop when things don't go your way don't stop when you don't see an end to it don't stop you don't know the blessing that god is going to bring forth glory to god as you continue to obey him as you continue to do what he wants to do he's going to bless you but you got to stand you know what one of the things that i find uh with the people of god is we give up too easy we give up too easy if god doesn't answer a prayer when we expect him to answer it we assume he's not going to answer it if God doesn't move when we think he should move, we assume he's not gonna, he's not gonna move. But a lot of times, God will allow you to go through the trial, amen. He allows you to go through the tribulation. Why? Because tribulation works patience in your life. And patience will give you some experience. And experience will give you hope. And that hope, you won't be ashamed. And so what is he doing? He's building you up spiritually. So he will allow you to go through. That's not an indication to quit. It's not an indication to stop. You have to be fully and completely persuaded God's got this. 
It don't look good, but God's got this. Amen. Some of you know that my house burned down and it was four years before I could move back in my house, which is where I am right now. Amen. And the devil did everything to try to keep that from happening. And yes, there were times of discouragement. There were times of tears and there was a whole lot of fighting. But in the end, praise God, God did it. Amen. Peter tells us, beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials as if some strange thing happened to you, but rejoice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I like when he said, after you have suffered a while, you'll receive the blessing. Sometimes it's the will of God for you to go through some things. Amen. Because God's got to know that you're not going to faint just because a particular thing happened in your life. You're not going to give up just because it didn't work the way you thought it's going to work. He's got to know that you are able to bear your cross and continue moving forward. In other words, God's got to know that you are trustworthy. Amen. And that you can handle the gifts and the call callings that he has placed upon your life. Nowhere in the Bible will you find anybody, amen, who is gifted by the Lord that didn't have any trials, didn't have any circumstances, was never persecuted, was never talked about, amen, was never criticized, amen. And if that's what you're looking for, you might as well just give up now, amen. God will not be able to use you but I am so glad that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. And a lot of people think that scripture is just talking about when you go to live with God, but I'm talking about God got some stuff for you right now. If you are able to stand, if you are able to obey God, if you are able to do what God wants you to do, God has some things for you right now. Bria, tell BJ to come here. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And so we got to be able to stand. We have got to be able, amen, to check our perceptions and our beliefs. Do you really believe what God says? Amen, amen. Do you really believe him? Do you really believe what God's? Because you know what? The devil going to test you to see if you do. Train yourself to connect to God in the spirit. Amen. Glory to God. Train yourself. How do you do that? Well, you must dedicate some time to be in the presence of the Lord on a daily basis. What does that mean? Glory to God. It means that you must practice being in God's presence. And, and, and we know that he'll never lead it. I am talking about, hallelujah, the manifestation of his presence. That means that you got to have a schedule that you meet him so that you can make sure that you don't miss your time with the Lord, where you are praying, where you are seeking him. Amen. Understanding that prayer is a two-way conversation. You don't do all the talking. Let God speak to you. Amen. Maybe he won't do it the first time when you try, but keep on because the spirit of God will speak to you. He wants to speak to you. He designed you to have ears to hear. He designed you so that you could uh, uh, um, work out your salvation, but not just your salvation, but so that you could bring other people into the kingdom of God. But we have to have a direction to go in. Study the word. Do you know that there are some people that the only time they pick their, their, their Bible up is on Sunday morning, and sometimes they don't even know where it is. Come in. Praise the Lord. They don't even know where it is. I want y'all to give me a moment because there are some people trying to get on. I see, and we're having a little problem getting them on. So just hold on for just a second. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just a second. 
How do you get them now? What do you mean? Okay, people of God, I am so sorry. Praise God. Um, as you can see, I'm not an expert on this. <laughs> Thank God uh, for my son, glory to God, who helps me out a lot. Don't know what I would do without him. Praise the Lord. So we want to go back. I want to go back um, to sharing my screen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I pray that you are um you are being blessed and we talked about training ourselves amen quieting our spirit our preoccupation and distractions amen detaching from our negative thinking overcoming our fears checking our perceptions and belief and training ourselves to be connected to the spirit of god and you do that through studying the word Fasting and praying opens up your spirit to be able to receive from the Lord. Glory to God. And it's something that we should do from time to time. Amen. And we should ask God uh, for somebody that we can pray with, have a, a connection with. Amen. And, you know, continue to, to reach out. Continue to ask God uh, to help you to grow in the areas where you may be weak because it is the will of God for us to grow in him and here are some of the ways that we're going to do that spiritual sensitivity are you spiritually sensitive to the will of God do you know when God is speaking can you feel him amen when you're ministering to somebody talking to somebody. What is the Holy Spirit saying? What is he showing us? You know, a lot of times we don't pay attention to those kinds of things. What is God saying? What is he showing while you're talking to this person? And once you pick that up in the spirit, and you know how you pick it up? You ask God, Lord, what do you want me to say to this person? Lord, what do you want me to know? What are you showing me? Amen. Amen. And see, a lot of times the people come, we just pray for them. We minister to them. We say whatever to them and we go on about our business, but we haven't asked God, Lord, what are you showing me? What do you want me to see? What do you want me to, to say? And, and when you begin to do that, God will reveal to you certain things that needs to be said. And when he does, don't be afraid of it. I want to give you uh, a testimony. This happened many, many years ago. I was doing a revival and it was in New York. And uh, um, when prayer time came and, you know, the, there were a lot of people in the prayer line coming up uh, and they wanted, um, they were really, they wanted prayer, but what they were really looking for was a prophetic uh, word for them. And the day before that particular day, I had prophesied to a lady and I told her um, that I saw in the spirit that she was going to get money. I don't generally prophesy about money, praise God, but this was what the Lord has showed me that she, that, that somebody, a man who owed her a large sum of money 
was going to give it to her and that she would have it. And I told her before this time tomorrow. Well, what happened was the next day, it snowed so bad, y'all. I stayed in the hotel room, praise God. And um, the day after that, uh, they were like, well, what happened to you last night? I said, it snowed. They said, oh, this is New York. We don't shut down when it snow. Oh, oh, it snowed so hard. I was like, well, y'all should have had somebody to come and get me because I shut down when it snow. But anyway, so there was this large numbers of people and they were all coming up to the altar I prayed for this lady and I whispered something in her ear and she looked at me and said, that's not true. That's not true. That's what she said. Now, because I know the voice of the Lord and I, I, I've been prophesying for since I was 11, <laughs> praise the name of the Lord. I knew that what I had heard was accurate. Um, and I only whispered it in her ear. Nobody else heard it but her. Praise the Lord. And so what I said to her was, okay, first, we're going to pray uh, for a controlling spirit. We're going to pray for the spirit that wants to manipulate this moment so that you won't get delivered. And I asked her, is that okay with you? And I was surprised when she said, yeah, that's fine. And she said it with attitude, rolling her eyes, hand on her hip, head going from side to side, praise God. And I began to pray for this woman and she fell out in the floor. Praise the Lord. She fell out in the floor and she started making sounds and wiggling on the floor and all of this stuff. And I recognized a man that she needed deliverance, that it was a demonic spirit. So anyway, long story short, after all of that was done, she got up and she confessed that what I had said to her was true. The reason why I'm telling you this, there will be times that God will give you a word. And when you tell somebody the word, they will say, that's not true. But you have to know the voice of God so that you know when you are saying something, whether or not it's accurate. You don't take down, you don't get upset, you don't stop because somebody says that. Amen. But you have got to be absolutely 100% sure that that is what God is saying to you. And you can be if you develop that relationship with him on a daily basis. Hopefully, praise the Lord, you are able to practice whatever your gift is on, not just in church. You know, a lot of people want to wait to go to church and then they want to be a wonder. Amen. But God wants you to use what he's given you on a daily basis as best you can, especially in this time. And we'll talk about that a little bit longer. He wants you to exercise the gift that he has given you. Amen in your daily life, in your church. Talk to your pastor, talk to your leader. Praise the name of the Lord. Let them know what your gift is. Pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is doing. Be responsive when God tells you what to do. And don't be weird. <laughs> don't be weird or overly spiritual which usually comes from a spirit of pride. For yea, thus saith the Lord God Almighty. My Lord, we don't need to be weird or, or, or try to be over spiritual. You know what? Have a humble spirit. Be humble before God and before his people. Amen. Conquer that spirit of fear. Use the spiritual senses. We talked about that last time. We said that we have five natural senses, five spiritual senses. Amen. And these spiritual senses, praise God, they all coincide with each other. And so we see with our natural eyes, for instance, amen. But we also can see with our spiritual eyes. Glory be to God. And what we see in the spirit, spirit realm is not what we see in the natural realm. Praise the name of the Lord. We can feel and touch, praise God, in the natural realm, but we perceive and discern 
in the spirit realm. Praise God. Not going to go through all of that. We did it last time. If you want information, let me know. Praise God. And so God wants you to build up those spiritual senses so that you can use them for his glory when you are ministering to other people. Praise God. That spiritual sensitivity will help you to be led by the spirit of God, to help you to use your discernment. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And what you'll learn from that, there will be times that you will pray for somebody and all of a sudden, whatever you're praying about, you'll feel it. They're not feeling well and suddenly you're not feeling well. They're depressed and suddenly you may feel that depression. Well, what has happened? Two things. Number one, spirits are transferable. Amen. And sometimes, amen, spirits can be transferred to us. That does not mean you are possessed. Amen. There's a difference in being possessed and being oppressed. Possession is when a demon spirit gets on the inside. Oppression is when the demon spirit tries to attack you from the outside. And sometimes God allows this to happen so that we can have an understanding of what the person is going through. Amen. And we are now able to pray for that person. We understand the sickness. We understand that they are depressed. We understand the stress. We understand, hallelujah, the emotional distress that they are going through because the whole Holy Spirit has allowed you, amen, to experience a little of it. Praise the name of the Lord. And so then we begin to pray in the spirit. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We pray in the spirit and the Holy, the Holy Spirit is able to destroy that yoke of bondage. Hallelujah. To conquer that fear that the person is going through. Praise the name of the Lord. Spiritual sensitivity requires that you stay present in the moment. Praise God. Present in the moment. Not that your mind is traveling all over the place, over here, over there, thinking about what you're going to do, what you got to do after church, what's going to happen next. No, stay present. Stay connected to the Spirit of God so that your ear can be attuned to what the Holy Spirit is saying, come off of autopilot. We talk about that a lot. We go about our lives, daily routine, autopilot, automatically know what's gonna happen next, what we're gonna do next. And so then we become close to what the Holy Spirit is showing us. And the example that I love to use is when Moses was up on that mountain, amen, and the burning bush, the bush was burning. But what did Moses do? The first time Moses walked right past the bush, didn't even notice that the bush was burning. Praise God. And the Bible says, but when he turned around the second time, hallelujah, that's when God began to speak. And so we've got to train ourselves to come off of autopilot, stay in the moment, be tuned to the spirit of God, have our, our ears tuned to the frequ frequency, hallelujah, of the move of God, of the voice of God, of what God is saying. Allow those spiritual gifts uh, to be used, praise God, to the glory of God, hallelujah. Now, by now, hopefully you are aware and you already know what your spiritual gifts are. Amen. God wants you to be fully aware. Now, go with me to, um, where are we going to go? We're going to go to Jeremiah. Go with me to the book of Jeremiah. Amen. We're going to look at uh, a couple of scriptures here. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. I need a bigger table. Amen. Praise God. Glory to God. Now, one thing that God did uh, with Jeremiah, and it not just um, Jeremiah, but God did this with all of his prophets. And I want to show you uh, just a couple of things. If you first chapter of Jeremiah, this one, we're going to start with something that is familiar. Uh, Jeremiah 1 and 4, and it says, 
Then the word of the Lord came unto me, this is Jeremiah speaking, saying, before I formed you in the belly, I knew thee. So look, God knew Jeremiah before he was formed in his mother's belly. Now, um, those of you who study the life of Jeremiah, you know he was studying to be a priest. He was not studying to be a prophet. He studied to be a priest, but God had a different calling upon his life. And we know that uh, Ephesians, the first chapter says that uh, before the foundation of the world, God predestinated us. And so before the world was formed, God knew that Jeremiah would be born and he called him a man to be a prophet. He said, I formed thee in your mother's belly. He said, I knew thee before you were even formed. The same is to every one of you who are on the line. Before God formed you, he knew you. And before you came out of the womb, I set you apart. I sanctified you. That's why you don't fit in. That's why you're not like other people. That's why even when you were a child, you were different. Amen. Glory to God. You felt different. People treated you different. They looked at you different. Amen. God did that because he put that anointing upon your life. He didn't want you to fit in. He wanted you to be separated from the world. He said, and I ordained you a prophet unto the nations. Now notice he said, I ordained you. Nobody else, I ordained you. God ordained you. Listen, we thank God for our leaders. Hallelujah. Glory to God. When they ordain you, what they are actually doing, praise God, is agreeing with what God has already done. Amen. They see the calling upon your life, and so they are agreeing with what God has already done. And then he says what he called him to do. He said, I called you unto the nations. See, um, you got to know what you who, who are you called to? Are you called to the nations? Are you called to a local church? Are you called to young people, old people, middle-aged people? Are you called to the sick? Are you called to the rich, the well, the poor? Who are you called to? And I would love it if you would take the time to just write that down and pray about it. Find out who God has called you to be. Hallelujah. All of us are called to do something different. One of the reasons why it's hard for us to walk in our calling is because we don't know what the calling is. We don't know who we call all two. Praise God. Verse six, then said I, ah, ah, Lord God, behold, I can't speak for I am a child. You ever heard of a prophet that cannot speak? Praise God. But when he looked at himself, this is how he saw himself, a child that could not speak. I remember when I felt like that. Sometimes I still do. A child that cannot speak. Yet God said, that's not what I called you to be. Amen. And so this is the reason why we have to be very, very careful what we call ourselves versus what God calls you. Amen. Because God knows what he put in you. You don't always know what's inside of you. You don't always know the power of God that works, that operates in you. And sometimes we have shut that power down. We're not using that power, first, because we don't know it. And secondly, we are afraid to do it. And third, God forbid that I should go out, amen, and do what I'm called to do. Verse seven, but the Lord said unto me, say not that I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I send you. Look at he said, don't say you're a child. Now he starts talking about sending him places. Praise God, hallelujah. All of you are sent to accomplish something, not just sitting on the pews. You are sent to accomplish something. He said, and whatsoever I command you, that's what you speak. Amen, amen. And so now we're talking what we were saying before, doing it. Hearing it, doing it. Glory to God. That's the big step. That's the step of faith. Hearing it, doing it. I can't put that in your spirit enough. Hear it, do it. Walk by faith, do it. I don't understand it, do it. It don't look like that's gonna work, do it. Praise God. I'm not sure. Do it. Let God worry about the details. You just obey God and do what he tells you to do. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. So he says, uh, verse number eight, be not afraid of their faces. I just love this um, because now he starts talking about the fear that we all experience. He said, look, don't be afraid of them. Don't be afraid of their faces because you're being obedient to me. He says, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Don't be afraid. Why? I'm with you. I got this. Amen. You're my mouthpiece. You're the person that I am using. Amen. Glory to God. Because everything that God does, he uses a man in the earth to do it. Why? Because he gave the earth, the dominion of the earth to man. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. Every now and then, the spirit of God will come. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he will step into a situation and we may not be able to point to a specific person that God used. But most of the time, God uses a person. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And all he's looking for is a committed, willing vessel. Glory to God that will take a stand and be obedient. Verse number nine, he says, then the Lord put forth his hands and touched my mouth. And the Lord said unto me, behold, I have put my words in your mouth. Praise God. See, verse 10, I have this day. And now he tells him he's more specific what he wants him to do. He said, I have this day set thee over nations. Praise God. Not just Israel, but nations over kingdoms. And then he tells them what he's supposed to do with them. Root out, root out, root out what? Root out the sin, root out the idolatry, root out everything that's not like God. Pull down, praise God. So he says, look, first you dig up the root, praise the Lord. And after the root is dug up, then you pull it down and to destroy then you destroy it he says then throw it down and i love that he didn't stop there because that's where a lot of us stop after we done rooted it up and we done destroyed it praise god we forget to do the next thing which is to build up that is your job you are not um you are not finish with what God has called you to do until you begin to build it up again. You got to build that person up. You got to build them up. Hallelujah. Through the word of God, build them up. Hallelujah. Build up their faith. Let them know who God is. Amen. Get them delivered. Get them set free. Hallelujah. Get them filled with the Holy Spirit. Build them up. Praise God. He says, and then when you build them up, what do you do? You plant them. Hallelujah. It's not done until they're planted. Praise the Lord. A lady told me one time, she said, well, when I go out and I minister to people, I don't tell them that they need to be in church somewhere. And I said, why not? And she said, I just feel like it's so much going on in these churches. I, I said, so, okay, you leave them out to the wolves. Yeah, there's stuff going on in church, but the church is the place where God said his name would be. The church is the place where God said, hallelujah, glory to God, that he would build his church. It's the place where he said the gates of hell would not prevail. The church is the place where he said help comes from the sanctuary. The church is the place, hallelujah, where we see in the book of Revelation where he is abiding in the midst of the church. His power is there. His anointing is there. His healing is there. His deliverance is there. His word is there. Strength is there. Glory be to God. Everything you need is there. You don't have to get tangled up, mixed up in all the other stuff. Yeah, that's there too. But we have to recognize that people are in the church. Why do we come there? It's like a hospital. Praise God. Some people come to get delivered. They know that 
they not right, they need to be delivered. They're in the right place for deliverance. Hallelujah. And see, the world has it wrong. They think because you go to church, everything is right about you. But we recognize that we go to church because we're getting right. Glory be to God. We're learning about God. Hallelujah. We're being strengthened. Glory to God. We're being set free. Glory to God. God is doing great things in our lives. And so we don't want to leave people out on the outside where, where Satan is, where his kingdom is being built, but we want to bring them in, glory to God, where the kingdom of God is being built. So you see by this that God, amen, amen, uh, had fixed it so that uh, he, the man of God knew exactly what he was supposed to be doing. God wants you to know exactly what you are are supposed to be doing. Amen. How you are supposed to carry the gift that he has given you and where you're supposed to go. Let's turn to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter number two, verses three through seven. Praise God. My time is fast approaching. And so I think I'm going to give you the scriptures and I'm going to tell you about it. Praise God. In Ezekiel chapter two, verses three through seven, and also chapter five, praise God, uh, specifically the fourth verse. But what happened is God had been, uh, wanted to use Ezekiel, and he did a weird, he did some weird things to use Ezekiel because he wanted to show the people their sins in the house of Israel. What he did, praise God, after they had uh, been in idolatry, amen, and iniquity. Now, an iniquity is a sin that you commit that you know you're wrong, amen. Uh, iniquity is a sin that we commit when we know it's a sin. We know it's wrong, but we do it anyway. And so this was the state of the people of, of Israel. And uh, uh, Ezekiel had been preaching the word of God to them. And so what God said to him, he says, uh, for 390 days, he said, I want you to bear the sin of Israel. And so what he wanted him to do was to lay on his side for 390 days to represent the 390 years that they had been in sin. Glory to God. And while he was laying on his side, he was laid there bound up to represent the bondage of sin that they were in. And then he said, after you do that, then I want you to turn over to the right side praise God, to bear the iniquity of the sins of Judah for 40 days. Praise the name of the Lord. And I want you to go back and read that. And this is how he ministered to the people. Praise the Lord. And I wanted to bring this out because a lot of times the way in which God causes us to minister to people, you know, other people would say, well, that wasn't God. Or I don't understand that. Or why would God do that? Certain times, you know, that God blesses me to uh, prophesy to people. Sometimes the prophecy come by way of a song. And uh, some people who are uh, on, on this Zoom right now, you know that I'll just start singing a song. And the song is for them. Praise God. And the song is what God is doing or what they are going through. And it comes through, through song. Don't be afraid to allow God to use you in whatever way he desires to use you. And what about Simon Peter in St. John 21 verses 15 through 17, where Jesus said, uh, Simon, uh, do you love me? And he said, yes, Lord, I love you. And what did Jesus say? Well, feed my sheep. Amen. And he kept telling him, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, feed my sheep, you know, feed my lamb, feed my sheep. Why did he do that? He was letting him know 
what his gift was. He was letting him know what his calling was, what he wanted him to do. Hallelujah. We've got to take the time to find out exactly what God wants to do, how God wants to use us. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory God. Hallelujah. 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 We got to know where he's taking us how we're going to get there. You see, because he's given us a great commission. And just because it's COVID does not mean that your assignment has ended. Amen. Hallelujah. COVID did not end your assignment to minister to those that are lost. So now the question becomes, if your assignment is not ended, what do you do? Amen. First of all, we're going to obey God. We're going to obey God. That's what we're going to do. We're going to do what God has called for us to do in this season. Now, some of you say, well, I can't do it. We can't go out. You know, uh, uh, we, can't, um, we can't do anything right now. All we can do is stay in our houses and we got to be concerned, praise God, about COVID. What can we do? And I have been praying about this same thing. You know, what I'm finding is that because of COVID, because of uh, um, the racism, because of the economy, because of all of the things that we are going through right now, people want God more now than they did before. And there are people who before you could not say anything to them about the Lord, they would actually get upset with you. But now, praise God, there are many people that don't know which way to turn. They don't know what to do. And so they want to know what to do to get to God. Glory to God. They want to know how to be blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. So I want to look at a few scriptures. Glory to God. Let's first go to St. Matthew chapter number 28, St. Matthew, chapter number 28, verses 18 through 20. Praise God. And again, um, if you would like to have a copy of these slides, I would more than happy, be will, I would be willing to send them to you. You just need to send me a, um, a text uh, on my telephone number which I will make sure that you have. I think everybody has it, but I will make sure that you have it. So in St. Matthew chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, and Jesus spake and said, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. So now he's talking about administrative authority. He had administrative authority. Amen. And now he has given that administrative authority to you. What does that mean? It means that you have the power, glory to God, amen, to do some things in the earth, glory to God, that the enemy does not have. You have the power. You have the authority. So what's the difference between power and authority? Well, let's use a policeman. A policeman has been given the authority by um, the state or the county or whatever municipal it is, amen, to carry out the law, right? They've given him that authority. Now, if you don't want to obey that authority, then his weapon is his power. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. So with the people of God, we have been given the authority by Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Pray, praise God. The Bible said that he, after he rose from on high, he gave gifts unto men. St. Matthew chapter number 10, he says, I have given you authority over all, what? Hallelujah. Over all demons. And we're going to, we see that also in St. Uh, Mark, where he has given us authority. Hallelujah. And what is the power? The power is the Holy Spirit that abides on the inside of us. And so he says in uh, St. Matthew chapter 28, verse 19, go therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. 
teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the world. Amen. And so we see his abiding presence. And notice that he tells them to go. And where does he tell them to go? He gives them instruction. Go therefore and teach all nations. Okay, so how do we do that? How do we teach all nations? Can you teach all nations? You absolutely can. And especially in this time that we are living in now, praise God, there are so many platforms that you can use just to get on and talk about the power of God. You can offer classes. You can have prayer. You can have Bible studies. You can select various scriptures or subjects that you know people are interested in. You can get on Zoom. You can get on YouTube. Praise God. You can get on Instagram. You can get on so many social media platforms to be able. Alexa, stop. Alexa, stop. For some reason, Alexa just decided to play pray a song that Jesus is worthy of the praise. I agree, but she, her um her timing is off. Praise God, glory to God, and so oh, glory to God. The Lord what has use; He has need of you. So He says, "Going into all nations," and He says, "Teach them to observe all things until I come." And so we see that we have a responsibility. And then when we go to St. Mark, chapter number 16, very familiar. We are all familiar uh, with the Great Commission, verse number 15, Mark 16, 15. And he says, go you into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believes, now notice, he that believes, not the pastors, not the prophets, not the prophets, you know, not the teachers, <laughs> praise God. But it says, if you believe, if you are a believer, and you know, we try to make them do all the work. Glory to God. The job of the pastor is to teach them when they come in the church. It's not the job of the pastor, amen, to go out into the fields. It's really not. I mean, we expect the pastor to do everything, but that is not the job of the pastor. That is the job, hallelujah, of the believers that are in the church. Amen. Your responsibility is to go in the hedges and highways and compel men and women to come. And guess what? They'll listen to you quicker than they will a pastor, quicker than you they will an apostle. Some of you know I've done a lot of street ministry. And some of you also know that when I do street ministry, I never tell them my title. When I go, I'm Brenda. And when they come to church, they're like, <gasps> I didn't know she was the pastor. Why? Because if I go there as pastor, they're not going to listen to me. They're not going to hear me. Praise God. Because they already have the assumption that the pastor is way up here, which is not true. And the, the lay members are way down here. They assume that because, praise God, you were saved and God has sanctified you and cleaned you up and changed your life and made you a new creature that you have never done anything wrong. They assume, glory to God, hallelujah, that they cannot, you can't identify with their plight and nothing could be further from the truth. And so it is your job as a believer, he that believes and is baptized. So if you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit, you have the responsibility to go out, praise the name of the Lord, baptized, shall be saved. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. It says, he that believe not shall be damned. So if they don't believe, that's on them. And see, a lot of times we see that as them attacking us. Oh, they didn't believe me. Oh, they didn't accept what I said. You know what? That has nothing to do with you. Your responsibility is to obey God. Do what God told you to do. If they don't receive it, it's on them. 
Look what 17 says, and I love it, I love it, I love it. Verse number 17, and these signs shall follow them that believe. You see, your anointing, your gifts, your callings is for a sign. In other words, God gave them to you so that when you are ministering, people will know, praise God, first, that there is a God, and secondly, that you are God's anointed. It's only for a sign. Amen. A lot of people think, well, she have all those spiritual gift classes and everything, and I don't know why she doing that. Well, the reason why is because you need to have some power <laughs> with your ministry. Praise God. People respond to the power of God in operation. And God has said to us, that signs and wonders will follow us. Where are your signs? Where are your, your, your wonders? That's why they followed Jesus around. It was the signs and the wonders. They wanted to be healed. They wanted to be delivered. They wanted to have uh, uh, folks raised from the dead. He's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The only difference is we will not challenge God. Amen. We're so afraid it might not happen. We're afraid, oh, they're going to talk about me. You have got to get out of that. Praise God. It says, and these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. When is the last time you cast out a devil? And you know they are alive and well. You turn on the TV. You hear about people doing some crazy ridiculous ridiculous stuff that they didn't used to do. We didn't used to hear about all this crazy stuff going on now. Amen. You know, and they got these Karens. You don't think Karen being Karen just because Karen want to be Karen. Karen is Karen because that's a demonic spirit. Praise God. The Bible says that you should cast out demon spirits. Cast out those devils. They shall speak with new tongues. Praise God. They shall take up serpents. Now, let me back up. Speak with new tongues. What is he talking about? He's talking about when the Holy Spirit allows um, tongues to come upon you and you begin to speak. That's a whole nother class. Praise God. He says, they shall take up serpents. He is not talking about you going and picking up a snake. Praise God. Or some venomous uh, a creature. Back in biblical times, and we saw it in the book of Acts, amen, when Paul was teaching, amen, and a viper came, glory to God, and the viper bit him, and the people were all sitting around waiting for him to drop dead. And the reason why, a lot of times in those days, the way they would test you to see if you were really of God, hallelujah, they would have some viper bite you, praise God. And if you died, then you weren't real, glory to God. And so Jesus uh, in those times recognized that. And so what he was saying that, if a snake bites you, if a viper bites you, what does he say? Any deadly thing, they shall not hurt you. Why? Because the power of God is resting on you. Praise the name of the Lord. He said, they shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. Well, my question is, how many sick people have you laid hands on? Glory to God. Over this, this year, this is what, August? How many people? No, let's go last year. It's not fair this year. Last year, how many people did you lay hands on? Praise God. How many people recovered? Everybody might not recover, praise God, because sometimes it's not God's will for them to recover. But God gives us a mandate. He gives us a commandment. And certainly there are those who will recover. I'm one of them, glory be to God hallelujah, who was told I was going to die. And you know what, y'all? That was 30 years ago. 30 years ago, they said I was going to die from brain tumors. Glory to God that they could not remove. Hallelujah. Thank God for the man of God. One of them said, I can't pray for you because if I pray for you and nothing happened, everybody going to look at me strange. I'm telling you, I was devastated that I couldn't get the bishop to pray for me. And then another bishop came and said, daughter, what do you want from the Lord? I said, I want 
going to be healed. And I'm telling you, he slapped his hand so hard on my head. Praise the name of the Lord. I thought I was going to faint. Wow. In the name of Jesus, looser. And that's all the man said. Hallelujah. Looser. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory to God. And I didn't get an instantaneous healing. Praise the name of the Lord like some people did. Some people would have been walked away and said, oh God, nothing happened. I'm still, hallelujah, going through the same thing. I'm still, no, I was blind. I was crippled. Praise God. Hallelujah. But what I said was, God, I receive it in Jesus' name. I don't see it. I don't feel anything. It don't look like it, but I receive it in Jesus' name. And over the course of the next few months, I begin to see the power of God working from that one prayer, hallelujah, of having hands laid on me and the man of God just saying one word, hallelujah, looser in the name of Jesus. And so I want to encourage you to obey the word of God. Stand on the word of God. Let the Holy Spirit do the work. Okay, I got to move even faster, y'all. So, glory to God. The Bible says in Romans 10, 14, how will they believe unless they hear? And how will they hear unless they've been sent? And how will they, you know, there's got to be a preacher. Somebody got to say something about the Lord. You know, if our gospel be hid, it's hid to them which are lost. So what can we do during this time of Corona? Well, first off, we can write cards. And this is something that, um, that I just started doing. We can write cards to family members, cards to neighbors, or you can send them a text. You can encourage them. You can write notes. You can write letters. You can telephone calls. You know what? It's, this might sound bad, but if a bill collector call me, I'm telling them about Jesus. Glory to God. Yes, I do. Praise God. Sometimes my family laugh at me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I say this COVID is something else, isn't it? Hallelujah. You got to know how to open up conversation with people. Hallelujah. And you'd be surprised in this hour, people are willing to talk. They're willing to share. Hallelujah. You know, you can say something like, you know, I believe Jesus is coming back. All of this crazy stuff going on. What do you think? How, engage them. Don't be afraid to engage people. Continue to have relationships with acquaintances that you had before COVID. Maybe your gym buddies, your neighbors, your friends, the people that you work with. Engage these people. Talk to these people. Pray and ask God before you do it. Lord, what do you want to show me? How would you have me to minister to this person? And when he tells you, you already know what I'm going to say. Do it. Don't allow fear to come in your heart to tell you, well, what if you wrong? What if this? What if that? Don't listen to the devil. Follow the spirit of God. Allow God's spirit, amen, to, to lead you. Hallelujah. Opportunities that arise. You know, a lot of us are ordering stuff online. We ordering food. We ordering from Amazon. Hallelujah. We see the store clerks. Praise God. It's an opportunity for you to just plant a seed. Hallelujah. You don't always have to have a long conversation. Sometimes just plant a seed, plant, let somebody else do the watering. God will bring the increase. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Plant a seed with your relatives, even relatives that, you, hey, maybe in the past they didn't want to hear anything. Maybe they didn't even believe God. Hallelujah. Let them know Jesus coming back. <laughs> you know, tell your friends, tell your enemies, stop to speak to the neighbors as you walk in the neighborhood. Yesterday, I took a walk in the neighborhood and I stopped to speak to those who uh, were um, in there doing lawn work. It was an opportunity, amen, to talk to them and to say something about the Lord, say something about the time that we are living in. Why? Because we have to obey the Great Commission. Hallelujah. It has not stopped. If it stopped, it's because we stopped it. 
Amen. Take prayer walks. Walk through your community. Walk through your, your, your neighborhood and begin to pray and minister to anyone who's in your path. Ask God to bring people into your path that you can minister to. Hallelujah. If you see somebody that you can help, help them. Praise God. Help them if you can. Hallelujah. If you can do it safely, help them. If you have too much food, uh, donate it, offer it, give food to, to other people. Let them know, glory to God, that God is real. Let them see the love of Jesus Christ in your life. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you something about the people. And then use all of the social media platforms that are available. Ask the Lord to give you creative ideas that you can use. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Um, that, that to, to, with your gifts so that people can be saved and they can be delivered and set free. Praise the name of the Lord because God is real. He's coming back. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't I want to be caught with my works undone. Praise the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. And so, praise God. I pray that um, you were blessed. You can uh, take, I know some, we have an additional, it looked like 22 people who joined in. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to ask um, you, um, you see the face that's up on the screen. Uh, and I know some of you can speak, some of you can't, some of you have to raise your hand, but I'd like to ask a few of you, what do you see? What do you see? What is this a picture of? Anybody? Um, this is Sister Rochelle. Um, How are you? I'm fine. Good. Yep. Yeah, I see. T I look like two people to me. Mm-hmm. So like the in the front, in the very first part right there, that's, the, that's a female, and at the end here, that's a man. Um, maybe it's like the um, um, what's the word I'm trying to be, trying to say? It won't come out. Like uh, being humble. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So how many of you um, see two people? You could write it in your chat. Sister Rochelle, put your phone back on mute. Amen. Praise God. How many of you see two people? There's a young woman, and um, we also see a man. Uh, Tyann, you had your hand raised? No, I was just raising some, my hand that I saw two people. Sorry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Praise God. Okay. So there were two people, and the reason why this is, uh, I put this up on the screen, is to show you how you can look at something and People see different things. And the same is true when we're talking about spiritual perception. It's easy to be able to perceive things differently. Praise the name of the Lord. We can perceive it differently. And so we have to really familiarize ourselves with how the spirit of God moves, what God, how he um, um speaks to us. Praise God. That is the only way that we will be able to know what God is saying and what God is doing. Do I have any questions or comments? I see that we have some in the chat, and I'm going to take a moment to try to look at them. All right. Most are talking about the faces. Amen. Any questions or comments? Yes, Rochelle. 
Um, I have a question about the spiritual sensitivity. Yes. Could you? Uh, is it possible? Is it possible it could be like in relation to being to sympathy, or empathy, um, or empathy as well? It could be. That could be included. But when we talk about spiritual sensitivity, we're talking really about being sensitive to the move of God. You know, uh, whether it be sympathy or empathy or joy or happiness, just being sensitive uh, to what God is saying, uh, what God is doing at a particular time. Let me see if I can think of an example. An example would be, um, for instance, say that, oh, here's a good one. In the Bible, there was a man who was at the gate called Beautiful. There's a Bible story about the, the beautiful gate. And every day the Bible said that this man would lay at this gate and he would beg for alms. He would, he would beg for money. Amen. And so as he was there begging for money, uh, um, um, the, the, the man of God came and he was asking for money and his response was silver and gold. I don't have any silver or gold, but what I have, I'll give to you. But the Bible says that they perceived that the man had faith to be healed. And so he said, in the name of Jesus, and he grabbed him by his hand, he said, rise up and walk. Well, that was spiritual sensitivity because he could tell that the man wanted to be healed. Some people don't want to be healed. I learned that in Africa. <laughs> yes, uh, Pastor Tally. Unmute your phone. Unmute your mic, Pastor Tally. I, I think I'm unmuted. Okay, you're muted. Okay, I'm, on, I'm, I'm unmuted now. Okay. Just, I was just in agreement you know, okay. some people just, they just like to complain. Uh, they use that as uh, uh, getting a, trying to get attention. And so they don't want to be healed for real. So that was just uh, a Amen. dynamic statement. <laughs> Amen. You know, um, I used to wonder why Jesus would ask people, do you want to be healed? Yeah. I'm like, why would he ask them? If, of course they want to be here. <laughs> I had a rude awakening, y'all, in Africa. A rude awakening. Praying for a man. He told me he didn't want to be healed. The man said, I don't want to be healed. And I don't know why I didn't listen to this man. And so then after I prayed for him, he was upset. I told you I didn't want to be healed. He said, I wanted you to pray that my family treat me better. He didn't want healing. He wanted to stay in the state that he was in and have them to continue to take care of him. Some people get a check and they don't want to be healed because they don't want their check interrupted. Some people just want sympathy. There's a whole range of reasons why people don't want to be healed. And so we have to ask them. And when they tell us no, if they say no, leave them alone. That man cursed me from amazing grace <laughs> to a flowing opportunity. And I learned that when people say no, no means no. <laughs> Praise God. Any other questions? Questions or comments? Okay, we are about to um, close down and I wanna thank everybody for coming, for being a part. I wanted to share um, my announcements, if it lets me. 
Amen. We have a dreams and vision webinar coming up on August 22nd. And we would love for you to be a part of it. If you are interested in receiving more information, you can go to my website at www.brendajmedley.com. And also every Thursday at 7 p.m., I'm teaching on Zoom on the book of Revelations, the end times. And of course, that is free, praise God, or you can join us on Zoom. If you're interested in joining on Zoom, please uh, send me uh, your email address so that I can make sure that you get the link. Um, and of course, Sunday morning, 10 a.m., amen. We welcome you to come. And then I have my email address is www.brendajmedley.com. If you want to send me an email, you can do it at Femi, which means the mouth that speaks for God, school at gmail.com. And also, I told you that I would uh, post my telephone number, which I am doing now. It's 202 um, 427 It didn't type. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Let me try it again. 202-427-1214. Praise God. Glory to God. Well, we thank you so much for coming. I do want to acknowledge uh, we have a couple of pastors who are on the line, and I want to give you an opportunity to just say hello. Praise God. So who wants to go first? Pastor Tally, since you are at the top. <laughs> Amen. <on> my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I just want to thank God for the opportunity to be on. I've been trying to get in on one of your classes, and I'm so glad that uh, God allowed me to do this one. Uh, it was really great, and I'll be signing on again. Praise <laughs> God. God bless you. May God continue to bless you. your ministry. We love you. Praise God. Love you too. Thank you so much. Uh, I saw somebody else. I saw Pastor Donna. Pastor Donna, where are you? I'm right here. My oh, daughter's bless face you. is up there. <laughs> I got on my Zoom and her face was up there. And I said, how does she do that? But uh, I am here. Um, and I just thank God uh, once again, utilizing these spiritual gifts is truly just a just an eye opener and a refresher and just puts us back into perspective of where we need to be in the times that we're living in because of people, people are looking for something. They're looking for something, they're looking for hope. And uh, we can come with the refreshing to let everyone know that, you know, God has given us what we get, what we have to receive from him, to use it, to use it so that he may get the glory out of their lives. So it's just been a blessing. Once again, Pastor Medley, just an awesome job and just always doing what God has called you to do and walking in your spiritual gifts as well. In Jesus name. Thank you so much. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you to everybody uh, who was a part. And if you would like to have the, um, if you would like to have the, the, well, what do you call the thing? <laughs> oh, boy. Hey. Y'all know what I'm saying. This is like, yeah, let me know. And I will be happy to send them to you. God bless. Amen. And I pray that God will continue to elevate your gift and that you will use your gifts to God's glory. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss any pastors or anybody who would like to have a word? All right. Praise God. Let us bow our heads. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for your word and for your precious people. I pray, Father, that like never before, that you would demonstrate your glory in their lives. I pray, Father, that they will go from this place and they will seek out opportunities to be used by you. I pray, Father, that ahead of time, the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, will lead and guide them. And Father, that you touch the hearts of those that they minister to. In the name of Jesus, I pray, Father, glory to God, oh, bless the name of the Lord, that as they minister minister. 
Hallelujah. Yokes will be destroyed. Burdens lifted. The oppressed might go free. I pray, God, that people will be saved and filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, God, do a new thing in our lives. Show yourself mighty in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, we come against the spirit of fear. Let fear be conquered in every life. I pray that ears will be open to hear what the spirit of God is saying. Stir up the gifts in your people, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray God, glory be to God. Hallelujah, that you will elevate spiritual sensitivity, that they will hear Hear you when you speak. Hear you, God. Hallelujah. Feel you when you move. Oh, God, let them see in the spirit realm. Let their spiritual senses, Lord God, be elevated like never before. Hallelujah. That they might do the work that you have called for them to do. And now, God, we pray for their families, that you would bless their family members. Oh, God, bless their households. God, we come against everything that the enemy wants to bring against them. In Jesus' mighty name, keep their bodies well. In Jesus' mighty name, and we thank you for it now. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. Take God care. God bless you. God bless.